morning. So we are here, of course, together today for some yoga Pilates fusion. Um, we're going to start ourselves out with, you can decide whether you're just going to lie down and have no um, additional support under you, or if you want to add support, I'm going to use a blanket today. So I have a blanket that's relatively thin, so I roll the whole length of the blanket up. If you have a blanket that's a little more robust, you can leave part of the blanket unrolled and then roll the rest of it up so that you have the right amount um, for your spine. So for me, folding this and then just rolling it into thirds gives me a nice um, pillow that's about the, you know, not too much wider than my spine. Um, but it's a little bit flat, so that is a little more comfortable for me. If I roll it up really tight in a cylinder, it pushes up against me a little bit more. So if you want a little bit um, firmer support, roll it up nice and tight. If you like it to be a little bit on the looser side, roll it up a little bit more like an oval. And you could, of course, again, choose not to have anything at all. What I like about having something underneath, whether it's the blocks or a pillow or the blanket, is that it gives me a chance to sort of release any tension that I may have gathered in my shoulders um, <clears throat> over the course of sleeping. <laughs> um, I am a side sleeper. I curl up in a little ball, so my shoulders roll forward when I sleep. And if that's something that happens to you, then this is a really great way to begin your morning. If you're not that um, way, you <laughs> sleep in some other configuration, then just lying down might be fine. Now, I have my feet right now in constructive rest, and I'm gonna leave them like that until I decide for sure that this is exactly the position that I want to be in, in this, on this blanket. I usually like to make sure that I like where it's placed, and then I'll go for straighter legs, but you can do um, the constructive rest, or you can put your feet together and do a butterfly shape if you prefer. Now, it turns out that the same muscle that stabilizes the shoulder in a forward position, the pectoralis minor, is also a secondary breathing muscle. So the second reason to release some tension from this muscle is so that we can access it to lift and expand the rib cage so that when we're using our abdominal muscles a little bit more uh, <laughs> for the ab work involved in Pilates, we have these secondary breathing muscles to uh, support our ability to take a nice deep breath, or reasonably deep breath at least. So while you're here, try to expand the rib cage, create a little more of a sense of softness around the top of the shoulder, the front of the shoulder. And we'll also, you just notice, like I notice whether I have neck tension on one side or the other, whether there's anything that feels like one shoulder's a little different than the other shoulder, or one hip's a little different than the other. So I'm just using my opening posture and the breath work just to check in. starting to feel this little sense of softness in the front, so I'm going to do about three more breaths. Now, if you don't have anything under your back, you don't have to do this part, but if you do, then the first thing to do is to remove whatever's under your back. Oh. And then we'll take a moment just to um, move a little side to side, 
with the legs or to rock a bit on your upper back just to experience wherever whatever it was that you had under you landed you so <clears throat> just simply pausing here and relaxing will take you know have a certain impact on the body having had the blanket underneath me there's like this kind of small sensation <clears throat> like an impression left behind by the blanket when I use the blocks underneath my shoulders it's a much wider sensation so just noticing where you landed <clears throat> we're gonna stretch the whole body out from fingertips to toe tips I need a tiny bit more room so I'm gonna come down here and then stretching out we're just gonna curl our body to one side so I'm just kind of I moved from the waist up over to my left and then I swung my legs a little to the left. <clears throat> my right shoulder blade is still touching the ground. My right hip is still touching the ground. So I haven't rolled onto my side, but I have done a side bend with the spine. <clears throat> now, if the arms overhead doesn't feel that good, you can go out more like a cactus or even like a T with the arms. For me, it depends. I usually like the stretchy side arm a little more on the straight side and then I bend the opposite arm just to kind of <clears throat> place the two together. You could also cross the outside ankle over the inside ankle that lifts just a little bit more sort of sensation for me into the IT band area on the outer thigh and outer hip so if that seems appropriate you could go for that. We'll pause here for about five or so more breaths, about 30 more seconds. Give or take a bit. <laughs> Take one more giant inhale and then meander back to the center. Oh, and just for a moment, oh, I like to pause and see if something has changed. And there's a slight feeling that my right side is a little bit longer than my left, that my right hip is slightly different than my left hip. Not, nothing has actually changed in my bone structure. Nothing has changed even in the muscular parts of the body but my connective tissue has changed a little bit. And so because that is the area of the body where most, like the vast majority of the sensory nerves that, you know, what we feel, <laughs> we feel our leg or feel our arm, um, those are sensory nerves, they live in the fascia. And so that information is coming back to my brain that there's a change and it definitely feels more relaxed. So this is one of the things I think is really interesting, right, is that is tuning in to the kind of sensitivity of that sensory data is one of the kind of groovy things to me about yoga and Pilates in, in general, that kind of focus and concentration. So I'm doing the other side. I always give it a second to let everything sort of shift and my back relax a little bit and then come around to the opposite side for this banana shape. Again, you could cross at the ankle, you can grab at your wrist or bend at the elbow, whatever seems appropriate. And for me, I just try to let the side that's being uh, the most stretched, if that's the right word, um, <laughs> uh, relax. <clears throat> and then again, come back to some nice deep breaths. Thank <laughs> you. 
because what I'm always watching for when I'm holding a yoga pose is like is there's sort of a sense initially when I first start to hold any shape there is a sort of resistance and then as I stay in the shape there comes a point where there's a little bit more softness or there's a sense that some of that resistance is letting go so I'm kind of always when I'm practicing by myself <laughs> I'm always watching for that moment where things just start to have a little sense of ease and then usually I have like a little thing like you know play a little game with myself so I wait for that point and then take two more breaths or something along that line so we're gonna do three more breaths here I just notice if there's any change And then we'll come back to the center and again just pause for a moment and notice the impact right so if the impact is a sense of like soreness or um, instability then you want to choose a little differently <laughs> the next time you do a yoga pose um, if this overall impact is pleasant and feels like uh, that you enjoy the outcome <laughs> as far as I can tell you should probably try it again uh, exactly the same way or as close as you can get all right so we've done a little bit of lengthening now let's just warm some stuff up so we're gonna start with these little uh, twisty moves so we're gonna take the legs over about I don't know halfway two-thirds of the way and then stretch one leg out or stretch both legs out or just curl the knees up toward the armpit when you get to the center point you'll bring the knees in as tight to your chest as you want and then go to the opposite side and again either straighten out or curl up depends on how big a space you've got as to which choice you might make let your arms kind of hang out in a T so in each point center and both sides there's a little movement or some straightening out of legs just so we add a little bit more work to the abdominal muscles. Now for some reason, <laughs> this movement pattern makes me travel down my mat. So <laughs> we're gonna do two more of these and then I will adjust for that. Once you've gotten back to the center after you've done your rounds, pause there in the middle, and then oh, we're going to give ourselves um, a little, so that kind of helps warm up the obliques and a little bit the lower abdominals. Now we're just going to kind of isolate these upper abdominals. So bring your hand behind your head. You can leave your feet in constructive rest or you can leave your feet resting, um, you know, floating in the air with the knees about like over the top rim of the pelvis just below the belly button and so you'll curl just as much as your abdominal muscles can bring you up pressing your head back into your hand and then come on down so we're just flexing the upper spine by using the abdominal muscles to create that little curl that flex and let's try to get those upper abdominals warmed up three more now keep the head pressed back into your hands we have a tendency sometimes to pull from the neck so we're also trying to unwind that habit all right now letting your feet rest back on the floor for a moment just pause for a second and see how your hip flexors are feeling how your low back kind of is arching off the floor or not there should be always be a little curve under the low back it's the uh, you know <laughs> how it's built um, but as we're doing some of the moves with Pilates there's a tendency for the back to over arch so we want to just try to find that neutral place kind of hold that neutral place nice and steady and then we'll release the hip flexor a little bit just to help with that so you're gonna turn your take your toes up off the floor we're gonna stretch the leg out 
give it a nice long reach. Your hands behind your head. We're going to bring that knee straight in, curl up toward it. And again, we're just trying to flex the spine. We're trying to warm up the upper abdominals, stretch out, let that hip flexor release, curl in. Stretch out, let the hip flexor release. And try to feel yourself. You can almost feel the stretch from all the way up by your diaphragm. Curl back in. All right, stretch the leg out. We're going to rotate it out to the right so the toes go to the right. We're going to bring the knee towards that right elbow. And again, we're still trying to curl in. So stretch out, rotate, curl in. One more time, stretch out, rotate the leg, bring it in. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of a twist. So we're going to stretch out, internally rotate. It won't go as far with the, just the thigh bone, but then you'll bring the leg across to the left and twist up. Stretch out, across to the left. And don't um, like skimp out on this stretch. Really stretch that leg out there. That's the release for the hip flexor. All right, so placing that leg back out now, nice and straight, and then kind of rotating through the external internal rotation. Try to feel how that impacts the hip itself. And then draw that leg back in towards that constructive rest position and just pause for a moment. And in the pause, we're trying to relax any tension that we may have been holding on to and then notice your right hip versus your left. We'll take the toes up on the left foot, glide that leg out. Bring the knee curl in. So toes up, glide out as best you can. Stretch through that whole side, bring the leg in. Stretch out nice and long. One more time, right down the center, curl in. All right, this is the external rotation. So we're gonna stretch out, rotate to the left. Bring the knee to the left elbow. Stretch out, rotate, bring it in. As smooth as you can make that movement pattern, stretch out, rotate, bring it in. All right, so now the internal rotation. So I'm gonna stretch, rotate in, curling to that right side, stretch down the center, rotate in, come across, one more, stretch out, rotate in, come across. Now again, I'm gonna stretch the leg out all the way nice and straight, and then just rotate the leg itself through that little range of motion. Try to feel the hip as the right side and the left side the same, or is there a slight difference in the way you experience the movement? Glide that leg back in, pause for a moment, and just notice. So again, try to let any tension or any muscle um, contraction that was holding onto your hip go just experience how the hip is left. All right, so what we should notice, uh, should, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but um, what often I notice, how's that, um, is doing this little release, my low back is a little bit less arched off the floor. There's just a little bit more of a sense that my pelvis is in a neutral position. So if that's the case for you as well, you may have tight hip flexors. <laughs> And that little movement pattern is something you may want to do um, on a daily basis, just to give yourself something to work with um, in terms of kind of helping to relieve tension from your hip flexors. Now, we're going to curl the upper body up. So again, I'm using the upper abdominals to try to get myself into that position. There's a tendency to want to pull from the neck. So if you'd like, you can keep one hand behind your head while we do the 100, and then 50 in, you'll switch hands. And I'll just let you know when that's going to happen. Now with the 100, usually you would do this with the legs both extended, but if you'd like, you can keep one leg on the floor for 50 and then do the opposite leg. And what I do is I switch. So I've got left leg, right arm, and then right leg, left arm, okay? So you can do it, follow me for a little bit more supported version or do the more challenging version. All right, here we go. So either one leg or both legs extended, arm is extended, and we're gonna pump the arm as we count four, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three,
three, two, one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, halfway, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ten, nine, eight, six, five, four, three, two, one, ten, nine, eight, six, five, four, three, two, one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, Three, two, one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bringing it down. All right. So if you did the full 100, that's a flipping killer. Um, <laughs> you might want a couple of deep breaths. The more mild version, you might be fine. We're gonna give ourselves a nice big stretch out. Oh, we're gonna take the right leg in, give it a hug, and then hold it onto that right leg. Give your foot a little spin. Oh. Go in the opposite direction with your foot. And then point and flex. <laughs> okay. Now we're gonna just see if we can extend the leg. The hamstrings might say no. And then bring that knee in nice and snug. See if the leg will extend. Bring the knee in nice and snug. See if it'll extend. And then bring it in. Now we're gonna extend this leg. We're gonna curl up and again, you could leave your hands behind your head so you can keep your neck in a neutral position or you can reach up to tap, okay? So this leg is gonna stretch out. I'm gonna curl up to meet this leg. Curl up to meet this leg. So again, with or without the hands, I'm still reaching into both legs really firm and giving myself this little extra ah, squeeze from the abdominals to try to flex my spine just a bit more. All right. It's not about pulling the leg to you. It's about you moving towards the leg with these little straight leg stretches. Two more sets. Now bringing that right leg towards you, or sorry, left leg towards you. <laughs> right leg stretches all the way out. And then spin your left foot in circles. Oh, and then spin oh, the opposite direction when you're ready. And then point and flex your foot. I try to notice if there's tension like in between my toes. <laughs> Sometimes I find tension like in the kind of muscles around my pinky toe. So we're gonna try to stretch the leg out, curl it in, stretch it out. It might not go all the way straight again. It doesn't matter. What just matters is that you're feeling some length and noticing the sensations at the back of your leg. <laughs> all right. Curl that leg in towards you. So we're gonna bring both knees in. Now you can put your hands slightly under your hips to help you maintain your low back curve. Again, we're not trying to ever like destroy the low back curve. <laughs> we're just trying to maintain it where it is. It's neutral space. Legs are gonna go up. If you'd like, you can take your hands, place them behind your head so you can keep your neck nice and stable. And then however much you can curl yourself in, flex your spine, you'll do that. So we're gonna lower the legs down for a count of four, three, two, one, hold it steady, four, three, two, one, and then come on back, okay? Lower, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, and come back. Lower, four, three, two, one, and hold, three, two, one, and come back. Lower, three, two, one, and hold, 
three, two, one, and come back. Lower, three, two, one, hold, squeeze that navel in, two, one, and come back. Two more. Lower, three, two, one, spread your toes apart. Three, two, one, and come back. Good, last one. Four, three, two, one, hold. Four, three, two, one, come on back. Release your legs or release your head as the case may be. Give yourself a moment just to make sure that any undue tension that you had has let go. And then check in again, check in with your low back. If your low back feels really vulnerable or a little bit sore, then next time you might try a slightly different version. Release any tension you may have been holding in your neck. Oh. All right, yogis, so we're gonna either roll like a ball or you can do the roll up. So we're gonna wind up in a seated position. So you pick, some people like one, some people like the other, some people like both. <laughs> so you get to decide which way you wanna roll. Do you wanna roll like a ball? Or do you wanna roll up? Oh. 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 I like rolling like a ball because it's fun and there's a boat pose involved. <laughs> so after, <laughs> after you've done like, I don't know, four, five, six, seven of those, however many you want to do, you'll bring yourself up to a seated position. Oh. Now I'm not rushing you. <laughs> because the roll-up takes a little longer. So if you're still working on those, work on those. And then once you get to a seated position, you're gonna sit cross-legged and sit up nice and tall. So you want your spine to be neutral. Again, so it doesn't feel like it's kind of hunching um, or rounding back. It doesn't feel like you're having to lean forward. So if you need to sit up on the edge of a blanket, do that. We're gonna drop the chin and then roll the head up and over one shoulder. Now notice, if there's a tendency for one of the shoulders to want to help. If it feels really pinchy on the side that you're rolling toward, just let your head take a slightly higher angle so there's a little bit more space there. And then we're going to roll the opposite direction. Okay. So just notice the first round, whether there's any tendency for the muscles to want to lift up in the shoulders, try to keep the shoulders relaxed. And also if there's pinchy places in your neck, adjust for those. We're not trying to create trouble. <laughs> we are trying to create space. So we're just gonna roll the head from one side to the other. Now, I don't go all the way to the very back just because it feels a little pinchy. So I just go most of the way back. About, so that I feel like I'm on a diagonal and I can feel the stretch through the front of my shoulder. That feels like enough. That doesn't mean you can't <laughs> feel it out. I'm noticing there's more sensitivity in one side of my neck than the other. So we're going to do one more of these little exploratory rolls. Okay. So I'm noticing there's a little bit more tension in my right side than my left. So I'm going to start with the right side. So starting again, sitting up nice and tall, I'm gonna take my chin and drop it forward. And then I'm gonna roll my head backwards until I feel a stretch on this front portion of my neck. So from just behind the ear on the skull down to the collarbone is a big muscle mass that that's the side that I wanna stir, that's the muscle that I wanna stretch. So I'm gonna take my collarbone and lower it a bit and then I'm taking this back part of my ear away from my collarbone. Okay, so slightly up and back. 
and then just feel out the amount of sensation there that feels appropriate. I also slightly adjust the angle of my chin and my head so I find the right spot and not something that feels pinchy. Pinchy um, has a kind of a uh, slight numbness to it or they might find some feeling of numbness in your fingertips that sort of thing so that's what we're trying to avoid there's a lot of nerves that come out of the neck and into the shoulder we're trying to get some space in the muscle without pinching the nerves okay now this muscle has a companion that lives on the back side of the neck so while i'm on this side i'm going to get to that as well so instead of my chin being more up or more out, I'm gonna drop it down towards my collarbone, let the forehead fold forward. Now this muscle connects my shoulder blade to the back of my skull. So as I lower my shoulder blade, I'm looking for a sensation right here in the back near the little ridgy point in the back of the skull. And again, it may not have a particularly sharp sensation, but any feeling of pressure there is what we're after. I'm pulling my shoulder blade down while my head is sort of left to loll over here toward the left. Again, sometimes little teeny tiny side to side adjustments feel good to me just to release pressure and tension from that. I'm trying not to hunch my back, <laughs> so reminding myself to sit up tall from time to time. All right, I'm gonna hold it for two more breaths. Right, hopefully you found something there. So I brought my shoulder black back first, then I'm gonna kind of let my head find the center point and then I'm floating it up. Okay, now a little bit of movement in the shoulders and a moment to pause with the spine nice and tall. Do you feel a difference between the side you just did and the other side? And I would swear to you that this shoulder's two inches taller. Again, it's not, it's the sensory information that I'm getting from the connected tissue. And when I get the sensory information, if it's nice, I do it again. <laughs> if it's not nice, I don't do it that way again. So I'm gonna do this other side. So I've dropped my chin. I'm gonna roll my head towards that right side. And again, I'm looking for this sensation that feels like it goes from the collarbone up to just behind my ear. And so when I find that sort of general area, I pause. And sometimes a little movement in the head helps me find it again if it goes away. Just be kind. Avoid those tingly, numb, or pinchy sensations. Now, often we load the neck and the upper back with tension. These two muscle groups that we're working with are the ones that stabilize our skull on our spine. And so when we develop tension here, we can cause some trouble to the parasympathetic nervous system even because of the tension. So I'm just releasing some stress while we release the muscles. All right, so this is feeling pretty good to me, so I'm gonna go for the other side. So now I'm gonna roll my head forward. Again, I'm looking for a stretch that kind of goes from my shoulder blade up towards the back of my skull. It doesn't have to be a big sensation, just a little feeling of that kind of path or that pressure is enough. And I'm actively drawing my shoulder blade down just to create that space. And again, sometimes minute adjustments of the head help. Now on this side, the sensation is softening much faster than on the other side, but I'm still gonna stay with it for about four more breaths. Okay, so a nice big inhale. So I'm gonna start by bringing my arm and shoulder back, then I'm gonna kind of let my head float to the center and come all the way back up. And then I'm gonna do some circles with my shoulders just to release any pressure or tension from there. Okay, and then just notice if there's a change, like 
Now my left shoulder feels like it's backward <laughs> in a more rela uh, even relationship with the right. Okay, so we're gonna, while we're here, we're gonna do a little bit of work for our wrists. So we're gonna just go stretch the hands out and taking the um, one hand, I'm gonna use my left one first. I'm just gonna drop that down. So I'm trying to stretch the top of the forearm. It helps me to bend my elbow slightly to get that. And I'm just holding, I've got a thumb right there. I'm just holding my hand in place, bending the elbow to feel a little stretch on the top of my forearm. And then I'm gonna flip my hand back up like stop in the name of love. And I'm gonna take my hand and pull it backward. Now, for me, the thumb is a really important place to stretch. That tends to get a lot of tension. So I'm trying to reach my thumb out and back. While I press out through the arm, for me, it helps to have the arm straighter when I'm stretching the bottom half. But you can experiment, see if it's right for you. Okay, so that arm and then the other, I'm gonna take this hand, drop it. So I'm stretching the top of the forearm here. It helps again for me to bend the elbow slightly. I've got a thumb right underneath just to keep myself kind of anchored to this bone. And then I'm gonna flip the palm up like stop in the name of love. I'm gonna pull the hand back, stretch my thumb out, press my arm as straight as I can. Again, you have to feel it out because maybe it's different for you. Okay, so then we're gonna do some little circles for the wrists. Go the opposite direction. And this is going to feel like the hand, but really it's also for the wrist. Spread your hands or fingers out as wide as you can get them and then curl them in really tight. Stretch them out really wide oh, and curl them in really tight. Stretch them out really wide and then one more time, curl them in tight. Okay, give everything a little shake. We're going to come up to all fours. So now that we've played with the wrist a little bit, you can also play with them here. So turning the hands forward turning them out to the side. You can even turn them around all the way to the back if you want to add a bigger sensation there. Let's do a few rounds of cat. And I just tend to do a couple rounds in each wrist position. take ourselves into a spinal balance. So the right leg goes back. You're going to take your left arm up. If you want a little less pressure in the wrist, you can move your hands slightly more forward or you can put an elbow on a block. So reaching out between those two points, give it a good long stretch. Then we're going to curl in and then reach out. Curl in, reach out. <laughs> One more time, curl in. Stretch out nice and long. So taking that right leg, we're gonna bring it forward. Bring yourself forward into the lunge. Now, you can come all the way up or stay down a little lower towards the ground. We're gonna ease the hip back and then bring the hip forward, kind of feeling out that lunge. Then I'm gonna add a little twist, then come back to neutral, take the hip back, bring the hip forward, find the lunge, add a little twist, Come back to center, take the hip back, and then one more time coming forward for the lunge, taking a little twist here, coming back with the hip, and then I'm gonna take that right leg all the way back, take it down. All right, so left leg, right arm, reaching out between those two points, curling in, stretching out, curling in, Stretch it out, curling in, stretch out nice and long. Bring that left leg forward. So again, you can stay low or come up a little higher. We're gonna come into the lunge. Take the hip back, find the hamstring stretch. That's the first half. And then come in forward again for the lunge. Add a twist, come back to center. Take the hip back, come in forward. Add a lunge and then a twist. Take it back. So one more time through that little sequence. Lunge, twist, back to the center, 
hip back. And then we'll take that left hip, left leg all the way back. Alrighty, Yogi. So we're going to take ourselves into a little downward dog. If downward dog is not your jam, then just take yourself either to child's pose or to a standing position. And you'll find yourself oh, catching up with us when we get to mountain pose. <laughs> so we'll all get there eventually together. So shoulders can go up and down a bit. Then try to find the spot where it feels like your shoulder is as neutral as possible. You can walk your heels up and down. Stretch back through both feet. <laughs> oh. Oh. Now, eventually, when you're done with your downward dog, just walk yourself together. You can do a little forward bend or come all the way up to standing when you're ready. When you get to a standing position, give yourself a nice big stretch. Give everything a little bit of a shake. And then find yourself <laughs> in your mountain pose. I'm going to correct any wardrobe malfunctions that are creeping up on me. <laughs> Doesn't pull too much of my attention away. All right, toes pointing forward. Feeling yourself get nice and tall. And then nice and steady. So we're gonna take a nice big breath, lift up onto your tiptoes, reach for the ceiling. Come on back down. You can bring your arms down or leave them up. Reach for the ceiling. Tiptoes and then come on back down. Reach for the ceiling. Tiptoes, we're gonna to come to a chair pose. We're gonna shift the weight into the right leg, bring all of the weight up and take the left leg into a tree. Nice and steady, lift your left leg up. We're gonna step back into a warrior one. So I just want my heel on the ground here. Mostly I'm still facing forward. Taking the arms up, we're gonna fold forward straight over the leg. Roll back up as best you can. One vertebrae stacks on top of the next. Turn slightly, so we're just gonna go slightly to the inside of this thigh. Stretch forward. Roll up, you can use your thighs for support if you need, if you're a little wobbly this morning. <laughs> We're gonna turn full onto the diagonal. So now my rib cage matches my hips. Stretch forward, roll up. Give yourself a nice big stretch. Straighten out your front leg. Now you're gonna pick one of those positions. Could go straight over the leg, slightly to the inside, slightly to the diagonal, okay? So choosing how far in you want to fold and then you can put blocks into your world if you care to. You keep your chest a little more elevated, the leg a little more straight, see how that feels, what happens if you bend your knee a little bit. Just feel where it hits you. Ooh, last breath here. All right, so we're gonna take this back into a plank. So if you'd prefer to skip this part, you can just step straight up to mountain pose and hold that. Otherwise, we'll take a plank, lower down, come into a cobra, and then we'll take ourselves back to dog. Take that right leg up with you. Give that knee a little like movement towards that outer right elbow. Stretch it back, sink your left heel. Bring the knee towards that outer left right elbow. Sink the heel, step your foot forward, and then we'll step the left one up, come up halfway, <laughs> fold, give yourself a moment, come in all the way to standing, give it a stretch, Ooh. and then find your way back to your mountain pose. Noticing the right side, left side, as if there is a difference. So again, arms reach up, tiptoes, coming back down, Reaching up tiptoes, 
coming back down. Just kind of giving myself that little chair primer. Reaching up into the tiptoes. Coming down to chair pose. Coming onto the left leg. Standing up tall for tree pose. Picking up that right knee, stepping it back, warrior one. And again, I just want this right leg anchored. So I've got some the spectrum of movement here. We're gonna fold forward spine stretch and right over that leg, roll up. Okay, so that's a certain angle. Slightly to the inside. Roll up. And then fully to the diagonal, stretch out and roll up. And then pick one of those. That's gonna be your anchor point for this hamstring stretch. And again, experiment with whether the leg should be all the way straight. For me, all the way straight is helpful and then moving the torso up or down to create more or less. When I bend my knee, it all goes right to the sit bone, keeping the leg straighter and lifting my torso is better. But experiment on your end and see if that's true for you. Take a nice big inhale. All right, so now we're all stepping back to plank. You can hit downward dog first if you like, and then a plank or just go directly to plank. And then we're gonna lower all the way down. Now, if you wanna hold your plank for a bit first, do. And then you'll come all the way to the belly. So we're gonna turn the cheek so that your face <laughs> is pointing in one direction and you're resting on your cheekbone. You can take the arms, either rest them beside you or cup one inside the other on your back. As your shoulders say is okay, <laughs> we're gonna bend the knees and kick the heels in for one, two, three. Then you're gonna straighten the legs, lift. Everything comes to the middle, hug towards the inside. Come on down opposite cheek and kick in. One, two, three, lift. And then come on back, we're gonna keep going. Just work with your pace. I'm just trying to notice like any tension that I'm developing around my neck, I'm trying to keep that <laughs> more in my abdominals and my back muscles, I'm trying to let my head go along for the ride. We're gonna do one more of these on each side. Now, I'm gonna extend the right arm, roll onto my right side. So I'm using my arm as a pillow. If there's any issues with that, you can swap your arm forward and use something else, a block or an actual pillow. <laughs> to rest your head. If your shoulder has some concerns, make sure you've got a little bit of movement um, possibilities. <laughs> You're not gonna knock over things in your own home. All right, hips on top of hips, shoulders on top of shoulders, this top arm up front for more support, hip or even behind your ear lifted for less support, okay? So we're gonna take the Legs and orient them so that the toes are separate and the heels are together. That's an external rotation. Lift your top leg, keep that external rotation. It'll feel smoother on the hip. And then we're gonna circle. Now, if you want a little bigger challenge, lift your bottom leg and try to hover that while you circle and try to keep your belly <laughs> as completely jiggle free as you can, right? So you're adding on a little bit more structural support or less, depending on the challenge level here. Now, pause, you're gonna rotate the leg inwardly. So now there'll be a little bit, maybe more of a ridge on the side here. So we're gonna try to get that femur bone all the way around. And then you're gonna circle it 
and try to maintain that internal rotation. And I'm trying to go the opposite direction with the circle, but <laughs> as best I can. Hug in through the sides of the waist. Try to keep yourself really stable through the core. And we're hoping for some little bit of a burn in this outer hip. Hopefully that's working out for you. Okay, so now we're gonna pause, bring the feet together, bring them behind you and then lift the feet. Knees are resting on the floor, knees open, leg might extend, or you can simply hold the knee open position and then come on back. So holding it for a beat and bringing it back together or extending the leg out if that doesn't bother your knee and then bringing it back together. Okay. So the side work is designed to strengthen the abdominals through holding steady, right? We're keeping ourselves stable. Abdominals mostly act as stabilizers, so that's functional. And then we're working the outer hip by doing these movements with the legs smooth, <laughs> slow, trying to make those muscles work nice and hard. Let's do three more. Hopefully it's working out. <laughs> we're meeting all those goals if that's the right word. <laughs> All right, once your knees are back together, you're gonna straighten your legs out. We're gonna try to work the inner thigh a bit now. So you can simply put your top leg, in this case, my left leg, straight out, or you can bend the knee if that seems okay. We're gonna lift the right leg, try to hold the hips steady, hold the shoulder steady, lift that right leg off the floor and pulse it up for 10, nine, eight, seven, six. Can you feel? Your deep hip flexor helping you do that work. Five, four, three, two, one. We might have done some bonuses. <laughs> Make a circle. Five, four, three, two. See how big a circle you can make. One, and then go the other direction. Five, four, three, two, one. Bring it back to the center. So we're gonna shift this um, leg back up on top. And then you're just gonna flip around so we can do the other side, whether that means rolling the other way and taking your phone with you or actually making a full <laughs> 180 degree turn it is up to you. Okay, hips on top of each other, shoulders on top of each other. We're gonna take the leg into that external rotation, lift it, and then again, we're circling it. So again, more support, I can leave my bottom leg on the floor and lift again with the side waist here. Less support, I'm gonna lift that bottom leg up and try to maintain all of this um, stability in my core by hugging in the abdominals. <laughs> Maybe not without that voice. <laughs> Two more. All right, so then we're gonna internally rotate. So we gotta get this femur bone to turn this other way. And then we're gonna circle theoretically the other way and try to hold steady through the core. Trying to reach out through my heel for this one. I find the internal rotation, if I reach through the heel, it's a little bit easier to feel that length. Trying to hug in through the sides of my waist. Two more. <laughs> that low belly comes in, last one. Okay, feet together. Behind you, lifted. Knees apart, maybe extending, coming back, closing it up. Let's do four more. Still trying to pick the sides of my waist up here. Draw that low belly in, last one. All right. So stretch of the legs out, I'm gonna take this guy up front and then the bottom leg lifts. And again, I'm gonna hug up through the sides of my waist. I'm trying to make like a tiny little tunnel for mice underneath the side of my waist. Pulse the leg up for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We're gonna circle it, five, big circles. Four, three, two, one. Go in the opposite direction, five, 
four, three, two, <laughs> one. Good. Let go with your abs. Roll onto your back. Oh, I'm going to try to make a little bit of space between me and the rubber plant. <laughs> and then we're just going to give ourselves a moment to let go. You can do these little windshield wipers with your legs. Ooh. Or a happy baby. <laughs> Something along that line. Stretch both legs out and see how that feels. And if it feels like your low back is arching, again, you can either put a blanket under your legs like we did under our back at the beginning, or you can come to this constructive rest. Now, between now and the end of the year, <laughs> there might be some, you know, like weird pressures or just some sadness about the fact that our holidays look a little different this year. So this pose is really about our nervous system. This is to allow our nervous system to relax and to come into that parasympathetic state. And we did all this work, <laughs> but we also might need a moment of rest. And so I encourage you to take this moment every time you do yoga to take this couple of minutes to just let go and relax. Just give yourself some opportunity for resiliency. While I'm here, I'm just sort of checking with my body to unwind any places where I'm still holding a little muscular tension or I'm gripping, especially in the face, the hips and the shoulders. Try to let all those places relax. Now, yogis, without moving, just notice your breath. And let the breath come in a little deeper. Take a breath all the way down to your tiptoes. Let it go with a big ah. 
And then you can wiggle your fingers and toes and stretch. Give yourself one more little hug, maybe even one more little boat pose. <laughs> Before we end our class together today. So thank you for joining me this morning. Take a nice big breath and a sigh. <sighs> Namaste, yogis. Have a great rest of your day.